Good evening, church. Good to see you out tonight. If you could make it, if you see someone missing that should be here, reach out, tell them you love them, tell them you miss them. Uh, several announcements before we begin, so I'm going to go quickly through these. Your emails, your Facebook, and your bulletin has most of these, so pay attention to that, uh, but I'll reiterate them here tonight. Jason Roberson asked for prayers on behalf of his wife, Julie, so please lift her up. Uh, pray for strength and encouragement for her. Uh, we love the family. We'll pray for them. Continue to pray for Carolyn Linderman. She still needs to be, uh, have treatment for her kidney issues, uh, so pray that she gets treated soon and, and that the search for answers is uh, successful. David Gibson is in Romania right now, so pray for his efforts, his ministry, and his travel. Remember Roger Moore, continue to pray for him. He is still at the Methodist Hospital in Memphis, so continue to pray for him that he regains his strength. Pray for Eva Looper as well, as uh, she's dealing with the aggressive mass indicative of cancer. Uh, she's still being referred and looked after more than, uh, more than she is currently, so continue to pray for her. George and Lenny Riley still need your prayers as George goes through rehab and Miss Lenny deals with her back. Uh, pray for them. Look forward to seeing them with us again. Josh Moore had ear surgery this past week, so please pray for his speedy recovery. Should be doing better by now. Ladies, you'll meet for your devotional tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, as you've been doing, you're wrapping up your current study and you're going to be starting a new book soon. So ladies, if you haven't been going, this is a good time to jump in on 10 a.m. on Thursdays. There's going to be a season game night this Sunday evening at 4 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer if you'd like to come to that, you'd like to sign up to bring food. If you don't sign up and still want to come, I'm sure you'd be welcome this Sunday evening at 4 for the season game night. The Children's Homes has asked if our church family could provide desserts for their homecoming. Desserts need to be dropped off next Tuesday, September 22nd, at the church if you want to provide them. If you want to help, use the sign-up list in the foyer and bring those uh, September 22nd to the church building. Two more things. Our annual men's retreat. I want to emphasize this. Uh, several new members since COVID that hadn't been able to go to this men's retreat. Very enjoyable weekend. October 7th and 8th at Shannon Linderman's cabin in Imboden. If you need directions, if you have questions, uh, please reach out. Use the sign-up list in the foyer and please sign up and RSVP. Make sure you come so us men can uh, prepare the right amount of food and everything like that. So sign up for the men's retreat. That's October 7th and 8th. We'll likely have dinner. That's October 7th, Friday evening around 6 or 6.30. Then Saturday morning we'll have breakfast and enjoy Shannon's uh, property there. Last thing I have, if you're new to the Wednesday night meals, you may not have noticed there's a, a box placed by the utensils generally for donations. That helps the cooks who pay for the food to, to not uh, take so much out of their own pockets so we can continue doing that. Uh, I'm sure those providing the food would be appreciative of that. Uh, that's all I have. If we miss anything, please let someone know. We'll get it announced for you. We'll pray for it for you. Uh, serving tonight, Cameron Kinney is going to have our opening prayer. Tyler Long is going to have our song leading. Ron Marsh is going to have our word of devotional, and Jimmy Poe will have our closing prayer. We'll start now with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our holy, righteous, heavenly Father, we humbly come before thee now to thank you once again for this wonderful and beautiful day that you've blessed us with. Father, we're thankful for this opportunity to gather together to sing songs of praise unto your name and to hear more from your word. Father, we pray that the things that have been prepared tonight will be according to thy will, and that those of us listening will listen with an open mind and an open heart and be ready to apply them to our daily walk in life. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, singing Alleluia, Alleluia.
If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises, grand. Sing and be happy. Press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you. He will keep your soul. Let all be faithful. Look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Amen. Good evening. Well, once again, I'm going to direct my devotion to our, our younger teenagers and other people, young adults. The older adults, if you listen real close, you might catch up. These are some thoughts I want y'all to share with you. Listen for a common theme in these scriptures. In Jeremiah it says, I know, O Lord, that the way of man is not in himself, that is not man who walks to direct his steps. In Proverbs 14, there's a way that seems right to man, but the end leads to the way to death. Proverbs 16, 25, again, there's a way that seems right to man, but the end leads to death. Okay, Isaiah 29, 13. This people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain they worship me. Their doctrines are but commandments of men. Getting a theme here yet? Okay, you say, okay, well, that's good, Mr. Ron, but all that's Old Testament. Okay, Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Christ quotes Isaiah again. This people honor me with their lips. Their hearts are far from me. In vain they worship me. Their doctrines are commandments of men. It's also repeated again in Mark chapter 7. Revelation 22, verse 18. I warn anyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this prophecy, God will take away his share of the tree of life in the holy city, which is described in this book. Have you counted on that man's way of worshiping God is not the right way? It's listed in the Old Testament and it's listed in the New Testament. How important, what will happen to men who choose to worship God their own way? Let's look in Leviticus chapter 10. Now Nahab and Abihu, sons of Aaron, took their censers but fire in it and laid the incense on it and offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. A fire came out from before the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord. Rather than using the fire that God authorized, they just thought, oh, you know, fire's fire. We'll just use this fire. It cost them their lives. And I'm sure not only their physical life, but probably their eternal life. 
Samuel chapter 6. Here we have David is moving the ark back to Jerusalem. The ark is supposed to be carried on two long poles by the priest. But David gets the idea, well, we're going to put the ark on a cart. That's got a long ways to go. And as they were going along, in Samuel chapter 6, verse 6, when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached up and took hold of the ark because the, ark, the oxen had stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because it was an irrelevant act. Therefore, God struck him down and he died beside the Ark of the Covenant. Here's Uzzah trying to keep the Ark from falling off the cart, but he reached up, he did something was God told him not to do. God told him only the priest could touch the Ark. It cost him his life. Okay, there again, you say, okay, Ron, that's, that's Old Testament. That doesn't apply to us today. There's one verse in Matthew, some verses in Matthew chapter 7. Personally, they scared me to death. Listen closely. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and in many mighty works in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. There's a lot of people in this world who are going out and they feel like they're teaching God's way. They are trying to, to do what they think, you know, bring others to, to Christ. But they're doing it in the way that they think is right and not what the Bible says. And one of the key things on that day, many will say to me, it's kind of frightening to me personally. I want to make sure I'm not one of those who are saying, did I not do that in your name? It comes down to how do we know what is true worship? How do we know what is vain worship? How do we know what God's will is? It's real simple. It's in the Bible. Just simply study your Bible. When you look at how you are worshiping, and don't worry about how other people around you are worshiping. Don't worry about the building down the road that has a different name on it. Just worry about yourself. Does it go against what the Bible says? Is it in the Bible? Or simply, is it not in the Bible? Don't add to, don't take away. So I encourage each of us, study our Bibles daily. Know how God wants to be worshiped. Know what he wants from us. Worship God with the right attitude. I hope these will be a meaningful thoughts to y'all and stay with you for the rest of your lives. If there's anyone who needs his prayers to support this congregation or needs to put on the Lord in baptism, they come as we stand and sing.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this night and that we've all been able to come here and be with those that weren't able to be here with us tonight and help them, if they can, come back to us in the next time that we meet. And thank you for allowing Ron to speak a message to us. Let us take that into this week and, and, and try to use it this week as we go throughout until we meet again. It's your name that I pray. Amen.